So what should San Diegans take away from last night's election? In a word, comfort, because the election restored a balance of power on the city council. And without that balance, the Democrats can even prevent a public discussion of the issues of concern to minority members on the council. More on that now and what that means from KUSI's Steve Bosch. Steve? Ellen, the, uh, currently the council has a short-lived uh, super majority of Democrats who could pass legislation without fear of a mayoral veto because they have the votes to override that. But that will not happen. The Democrats are still a majority on the council. But the significance of Republican Chris Cates' election in District 6 is twofold. One, it preserves the mayor's power to veto items the council approves like the minimum wage, for example. And two, four votes are needed to put items on the council docket for discussion. And Chris Kate is that fourth vote. Political consultant John Dadian. If this one council district had gone the other way last night, Mayor Faulkner's agenda would be thwarted for the next two years and be very frustrating for him. And then he goes for re-election in two years, not having been able to do anything because they would have had override majority. It was the most important race of the season. The voters in District 6 not only wanted this fourth Republican vote, they wanted the first Asian voice on the council in 50 years to be heard citywide. Chris Kate is that voice. For some of the har harder topics, some of the bigger topics, there's allows for that debate and that dialogue. And I think that's what the residents of District 6 wanted. They wanted a balanced council. They wanted to make sure that their voices were heard and that there was going to be that uh, honest spirited discussion at the dais when these issues come forward. Chris Kate's election was crucial for Mayor Kevin Faulkner's reform agenda that includes shifting more money to neighborhoods. Chris understands, as I do, that we will never allow this city to go back and repeat those financial mistakes of the past. So he's very supportive of the agenda that I've laid out, the reform that we're making, financial reforms. And when we do that, we have the dollars to invest back into our neighborhoods. Think back for a moment to the chaos of the short-lived Bob Filner administration that brought hyper-partisanship. We were on track to implementing a lot of really great reforms, and they were really sidelined. And, uh, you know, I, I'm tired of House of Cards San Diego style here, and I'm ready to get back to the people's business. That is going to happen. There are no Bob Filners on the council. You're looking at a different demeanor that will be coming to the council. Now it's a, a more even council. You won't be seeing a lot of divisive issues that are just pushed through without a lot of debate and a lot of conversation. Now, San Diego's economy is leading the state and recovering from the recession, and our economy is expanding. This council will not put that in jeopardy over partisanship. So you mentioned no Bob Filner's on the council. I mean, that means that obviously things will move ahead, as you said in your story. Yeah, not really. No Bob Filner's. In fact, this council gets along uh, better than any council we've seen in about 25 years. And the newer Democrats, uh, they're showing they can compromise with the Republicans, especially on some of the citywide issues. Council President Don, uh, Todd Gloria for one, a moderate, Sherry Leitner for another. So they're not too far apart. All right. Let's hope yeah. they get the job done. I think they will. Thank Thanks, you, Steve. Steve.